Stage two of La Boite San Juan was even flatter than the first one. 168 kilometers starting and finishing in the small town of Pasito with just one climb en route. If you can even call it a climb in fact, just 800 meters long and only 1.3% average gradient, the riders would barely have even noticed it. So with little in the way of undulations and very little wind, today looks set to be another one for the sprinters to strut their stuff in the finale. There were a few attacks after the flag dropped for kilometre zero, but it wouldn't be long before eight riders made their way up the road early to form the day's breakaway. Ballerin of the Escadie Fondation, Robin Carpenter of Rally Pro Cycling, Leandre Valadez of the Agripassion Virgin de Fatima, his teammate Daniel Juarez, leader of the Intermediate Sprints Competition, uh, Monte of the Argentinian National Team, Urado of Panama National Team, and two riders from the Peruvian National Team, Navarro and Ruiz. Behind the peloton was more than content to sit up and allow the escapees a little bit of freedom. Their cause up front though was not helped by a stray dog which ran out onto the course, taking a couple of them down after just 20 kilometers of racing. Ouch. We're not used to seeing this man in a normal trade team kit, are we? Three-time world champion Pete Scan was looking very relaxed in the bunch as they cruised along the flat roads near the start. It wasn't long though before they got to the first of the intermediate sprints of the day, that being taken by Daniel Juarez, the 31-year-old from Agrupacion Virgin de Fatima, extending his lead in that competition. With 30 kilometres to go, the break began to break up. Carpenter and Valades here at the front. They, though, were soon caught and passed by Christopher Urado of the Panama national team. As they approached 20 k's to go, the gap between the break and the bunch was coming down towards the one minute mark. This stage had sprint finish written all over it. Once again though, it wasn't without its incidents. A crash with 13 k's to go caused a couple of rides to veer off the side of the road and into a storm drain. Let's hope they weren't too badly hurt. Coming in towards the 10k to go banner and the peloton were absolutely flying. Speeds approaching and exceeding 70 km per hour as the big team started to position their firepower towards the front. It was only a matter of time before the breakaway would be caught. Carpenter and Urado the last to be brought back into the fold. And so we shall fast forward to one kilometre to go, at which point all of the usual suspects were at the front. Ala Philippe on lead out duties for the Kerning Quick Step, Bora Hansger, UAT Emirates and Israel Startup Nation waiting in the wings. It was fast, it was hectic and it was messy. No team able to completely dominate the lead out and it was a case of using your sprinter's instinct to pick the best wheel and the best line to follow. Peter Sagan was one of the first to make his move but on the left hand side of your screens it was Fernando Gaviria who picked his way through and powered his way to the win. Second day of racing for Gaviria, first win of the year. This is the top 10, a brilliant sprint by Nicola Narayo saw him finish in the runner-up spot, closely followed by Bardiani CSF's Marco Benfato. In the absence of Christophe Laporte, Pete Allegart stepped up to the mark for Coffles to take fourth, while Sagan had to make do with fifth. In the GC, with yesterday's winner Rudy Barbier finishing outside the top 10 on the day, he's now down to second place, with Gaviria the new wearer of the white and blue leaders jersey going into tomorrow's 15km individual time trial. We'll be back with highlights of that this time tomorrow. We'll see you then.